So in effect, there are only finitely many non-equivalent first order sentences of point by rank k, and that is a very useful fact in the model theory of the structure of finite relational symmetry and computer trees. If the tree is not yet connected, then it's obviously no longer a tree, then you call it a torrent like form of block theory. So there is the same type, but just to clarify the difference between these trees and trees in the sense that they are usually defined in graph theory. In graph theory, the edge relation of the tree cannot be transferred, because then you would have a cycle and not no longer be a tree, whereas our is transitive, so that's the salient difference. Other differences are that our edge relation is always directed, whereas graph theorists usually study undirected graphs, and our trees usually infinite, whereas graph theorists usually study finite trees. They also do study infinite trees, but usually finite trees. So those are the obvious differences. As I showed on the first slide, a half a maximal linearly ordered subset of the tree. So it's basically a linear order, but we often identify it with. I'll just go back to the first slide. So the, that is a part, the part of the tree that is indicated in bold. So it's a maximal binary order subset. And in the literature, parts are also constants or histories. And we will denote the set of all parts as HP. Right. And we then define a C path in a tree as being a path that is isomorphic to the linear order from C. C is a class of linear orders. The path is simply a C path if it is isomorphic to some element from C. It's an alpha path consists of just one linear order alpha. And we call a tree a C tree, then each part is a C part and an alpha tree when each part is an alpha part. And T, C, will denote the class of trees of which all parts are isomorphic elements from C, so the parts of the C trees. And it will simply be denoted as T brackets alpha if C consists just one element alpha. So to recall some definitions, we start counting the heights of those zero. So the height of the node of the successors of the node. The alpha of zero is the set of nodes that have height alpha. And the height of the tree is the first alpha, for which the alpha of the level is empty. So basically the union of all the height in the tree. And one might not think so, but the structure of the parts and the branching behavior of the tree are sometimes related in subtle ways as witnessed by, for example, Koenig's lemma, which can be proved in the Lomotranko set theory choice. It simply says that there is no tree of high columnica of which all its paths are finite and all its levels are finite. So the finite levels relate to the branching behavior of the tree basically says that the tree is finitely branching. 
and the Hajj relates to what the past should like. They are unbounded, but all finite. And one can prove that no such thing exists only if one assumes that all levels are finite. If the can be infinite, then can exist. So, in fact, one behavior, the half behavior of a tree can be related in subtle and surprising ways. And there are similar examples with outside trees, suspend trees, etc. So this is the motivation The structure of a tree is determined in large part by half behavior and then by its branching behavior. And the idea is to try to use what we know about the branches, the branches in parts, to study the parts of C trees. Specifically, use the first order theory of the class C to determine properties of the first order theory of the class of C trees. So that's TA. C denotes the first order theory of the class C, that is simply by definition the set of all first order sentences that are true every tree or every linear order that belongs to C. So it's not a class of linear orders, it has a first order theory. We want to use that first order theory to determine the first order theory of the class of C trees. This is non trivial because, in general, it needs to be elementary. So it cannot be definable. In other words, if one has a desirable set of first sentences that one hopes axiomatize the theory of the class K, it's supposed to show that models of the actualization is the same as the class of models of the theory of K. The problem is that if K is not an elementary class, it will generally admit its theory will admit non standard models. So the first order theory of K will generally admit trees that are not in K, but are first order distinguishable from trees that are in K. And the goal is to show that each of those standard models is then any equivalent to an intended standard model, maybe for K. So practically, if you want to show that sigma actifies the theory of K, and I mention this because in mathematics the words axiomatize and define are often used famously. But when one says one axiomatizes a first order theory that is not the same as defining the cross, to axiomatize the theory of the cross K, one needs a decidable set of She must be able to determine if the statement is an axiom. Not. And the sentence that is true, any model of symmetization, one must show that it is also true. An intended model of symmetization, namely a model of A. So, uh, the more concrete way to do this is to show that. Every model of sigma is elementarily equivalent to some intended model of sigma. Elementarily equivalent meaning that they have exactly the same good, they satisfy the same first order speed. And in practice, one does the product shows that for each natural number n, every model of sigma is equivalent. Satisfies the same 
first of the sentences of 24 and up to n, which is some dependent model of sigma k, a model of the theory of k, and then it's in to a model that is in k itself. So that is what one has to do. Our first order logic that can apply the normal proposition of not and or implies that one can quantify the universality over sets in the domain, which in our case would mean quantifying over sets of nodes. Not quantify over rather sorry, I should restate one can quantify over sets of nodes. Quantify diversity and extension elements of the domain, but not over subsets of the domain. And the reason why one study trees is first order logic on the one hand, the basis for many other logics that, and on the other hand, it has a very beautiful model theory. So practically to show that two structures are one uses an Aaron Foyt prize A K. So one starts with trees T and S, although of course they can be any structures, they needn't actually be trees. Any structures with the same language. And the game proceeds in N bounds. There are two players, player one and player two. Are called other large and other watches. For spoiler and duplicator, the row of is to show that two trees are somehow different. The row of player two is to show that two trees are in some sense like. Or they are just called die. And each round of the game, player one plays first. He picks an element from either of the two trees. And in each round, he is free to use any of the two trees. He doesn't to a specific tree. Player two then responds by selecting an element from the other tree. But she has to select the element in such a way that she duplicates exactly what player one does in the sense shown there structures must set this and provided that player she she then wins and if player two has for this game and it turns out that the two can be pretty good. So in other words, satisfy the same or the sentences of quantify rank at most n. So in practice, that is how one shows that two structures are in equivalent. One would also combine with, for example, different constructions where one shows that is preserved one applies certain types of conditions to trees where trees that make up the new tree are themselves determined. I'll discuss some examples of axiomatizations. So first the Parts that consist of the nine trees, of which each part has is not first order definable, and no axiomatization of its first order theories. Although one presumes that it is axiomatizable, but by terms, in principle, conceivable that it might not even be. Accidentizable. This context 
it should be to think that that would be the case. The following process of treatment is not bill, but they can be actually possible with the theories. Consists of all ETA trees. The ETA is the ordering of national numbers. By Cantor's theorem, the rational number as an ordered set is characterized by the fact of being counted the infinite, dense, and not having any points. So density is spread to logic. Not having endpoints is expressed when it's state that there is no root and there are no leaves. And the countability can be obtained using a model of eta simply invokes a downward Schrodinger string countable permanent model. Right, so that, that case is fairly straightforward. Uh, James Schrodinger effects obtained an axiomatization of the first order theory of the class and interestingly the class of finitely branching trees has precisely the same first order theory as the class of all trees. But <laughs> when the theory serves the value of Describing cross all trees, then it in fact defines that cross. Whereas when it serves the role of describing trees, it re axiomatizes its first order theory but does not define it. So it's the same theory that was a definition and in another context for axiomatization. The following classes of trees are not first or final. Knowing axiomatic of the first order theory for the leads So the class that consists of all final trees. And this class, by the way, admits trees that are infinite as models. The first order theory admits infinite trees. And then the class that consists of trees of any finite height, like unspecified. And in that case, the trees might be infinitely branching, but they have finite height. Also, has a first order theory that admits trees of infinite height. And then the class that consists of all well finite trees. A well-founded tree being one with the property that each non-empty subset has a minimal element. And that was proved by case Dutz. And then finally, the class that the square omega is ordering of the natural numbers. And in that instance, we use it in such examples. Any important mathematical properties can be expressed as monadic second order sentences. So, with monadic second order logic, we first order logic by section over sets. And properties like induction, completeness, and well foundedness can be expressed using monadic second order sentences of the form that. Made on the slide, where phi is a first order formula using a second order variable. And 
and inducers is obtained a result that shows that under such magnetic second can be approximated using a scheme where instead of quantifying set, one considers only states that are parametrically defined So to give you an example, the first expression on the slide is an It is a single sentence that expresses the property of our boundaries. Namely, for each set X, if the set is non empty, then it has a minimum element. And the second expression starts with a formula 5 that has possibly many variables, but some of the variables say are parameters. And one can say every set defines formula of i must be. In other words, if there set that is defined by phi there, then there is a minimal of such element in the set defined by phi. And let WF be the set of all first order sentences of the form sigma sub phi. And case did show that the two form slides the infinite scheme WF, if and if, there is a well founded tree that is in equivalent to the original tree. So the scheme WF does not express the property of well foundedness because its theory will that are not well founded, but for each n, it will be in equivalent. The uh, model of the theory will be in equivalent to a tree that actually is well founded. Right, so then to get back to the problem of uh, the fifth order theory of the class of the goal is to solve the part of linear orders with the axiomatization of the classes and then to axiomatize the third class of C trees. And this is not straightforward. The problems that one encounters are following. First, you cannot, in first order logic, say that every part belongs to C. Of course, First order logic, you cannot quantify over general, therefore not over general. You can only refer to parametric file part. Now, one way to avoid that problem would be the geometric approach as used in axiomatic geometry, where in structures one starts with two with variables for nodes and variables for paths. Similar to geometry where one has variables for points for lines. And an incident relation between points and lines, one could have a language where you have and path variables with some kind of element to each relation. But that defeats the whole purpose of what we are trying to do. So the problem remains. The second reason why one can't say every part is because the class C itself need not be an elementary part. The first order theory of C might at models that are not so one cannot use first order axioms to force parametric to find the past. 
cause. So, in summary, the strongest space in first order logic is that every time a truly definable cause, for each A, we can implement the linear order from C. In particular cases, of course, more may be I'll give three examples to give the audience some feeling of problems that one encounters. Have in the first example a tree of which each part is a major equivalent to some alpha, yet the tree itself is not a major equivalent to any alpha tree. So consider the tree that consists of a copy of omega or a few disjoint copies. Now each of its parts is an omega. Because, or in fact, not an omega path, but omega, because omega plus zeta is a majority of omega. <laughs> and yet, the tree is not a majority of omega. In for k greater or equal to 5, it's not to an omega tree. True omega tree. Every node would have four ramification points or branching points of the point. So for every two nodes, have a meet. But in this particular tree, if one takes a node on the one copy of theta and a node on the other copy of theta, not have a meet. There is no greatest around to those two nodes. And this is not really a sentence of quantifier and five. Second example, we have here orders alpha and beta. In the first order theories of Class of alpha trees and the class of beta trees are not the same. So take alpha to be the ordering of the rationals beta, and take beta to be the ordering of the reals lambda. And those two linear orders have the same first order theory. It's a bit surprising because, as is well known, the field of rational and the field of reals do not have the same because you can, for example, express the existence of square roots one but not the other. Treated as linear orders, the rationals and the reals do have the same. And this is the, the reals is an entire equivalent to the rationals. Start with the model of reals. It need not be the reals itself, but it will be dense ordered. It will not have a least element, or greatest element. And those properties can be of small finite quantifier n. And one can then invoke the theorem that you have a countable model with the same property of dense and without any points, hence by Cantor's theorem, that model the the rationals and in particular to be entirely equivalent to the rationals. Or generally entirely equivalent. So those two structures have the same first order theory. The of other trees have the same first order theory. Consider it consists of a copy of the rational theta, followed by two just 
of the shop pizza. It's on the sketch. I hope everyone can see it. Now, each part in that tree has a few plus more pictures that should be seen by the cancerous hero. Eta plus eta is up to the So the tree is an eta tree. But note that there's no point at which the copy of eta branch the twin copies of eta. So each path has a gap. So neither path is therefore neither path can be asked to open to to the Else. And the problem here is that we don't have a greatest lower bound. If one considers the set consisting of the two disjoint copies of eta at the top, they don't have a greatest lower bound. And that is a property that can be expressed in first order logic. Whereas in a lambda tree, there can be a greatest lower bound. And that is a property that can be explained in the sentence of quantifier and four. In fact, this tree is not even four equivalent to a true number tree. So the two theories are not the same, which I find quite surprising. Another example a tree that is elementary equivalent to an alpha tree. Even though only a minority of its parts are actually up parts. So start with the binary tree of heights of the other one. More formally, each internal node has exactly three meeting successors, and every part is an omega plus one part. And clearly that tree has two to the power all it each path can be seen as a binary sequence with the leaf at the end. And therefore there will be uncountable nodes in the tree. Uh, the downward zone I'm certain will be an uncountable elementary substrate. For let B of the plus one prime. It can be shown that that B of the plus one prime is obtained from B plus one by removing uncountably many leaves from B of the plus one. So it follows that the new tree has uncountably many omega paths, but only countably omega plus one paths, and yet it is elementarily equivalent to omega plus one tree, but it's not elementarily equivalent to any omega tree. Each omega plus one path is defined by using the leaf of that path as a parameter, whereas none of the omega paths are definable. And that is the root of our problem is undefined paths. Because one cannot force undefined paths to behave the way that one would like them to behave. And they may have the effect of undefined in a way that one cannot control. Okay, so let's look at this definability issue in a bit more detail. So if one generalizes the previous observation that B omega plus one prime, every omega plus one of find using it as a parameter, one can define a type of part for the zero part. And it is a path that contains a node such that the set of the processors of that node are perfectly ordered. 
If a cough is not singular, then it will be not It's best understood with the sketch. And the sketch is on the right of the side. Cough omega is emergent. Whereas from omega, point we add a copy of omega one. And those paths are similar. Because at some point high up on the path, the path becomes totally ordered, or the, the successors become totally ordered. Whereas the path omega doesn't have such a node. It emerges as the limits of all of those omega plus one points. And the problem is you cannot approximate an ordinal initial segments as the sketch shows. So that particular omega it consists of all nodes that have exactly two immediate successors. So even though it's an emergent path, it is nonetheless possible. But what one can say is that every path that is defined must be Every singular path is using a node high up this parameter. In fact, even with emergent paths, it can be shown that if a path is at the including an emergent path, it can be defined using at most one parameter. And the parameter can be chosen from the form of the Now it turns out that in first order logic, one can express the property that the formula defines a path. So the formula phi, and the claim will be that phi defines a path. From phi, we construct the formula pi sub phi, and it expresses the properties of the path, namely it's non empty, it's totally ordered. The third conjunct expresses the fact that there are no gaps and no predecessors to the sets, and the last conjunct expresses the fact that the there are no elements that sit set. And so that formula expresses pi defines the tuple Z is has the, the function of one uses the formula in you know, an actual tree, one substitutes constants and there are three different so phi defines a part in T using parameters from the top of A, if and only if the formula pi sub phi is three of those parameters. So that's a good start. First allows us to Impose the first order theory of the cross of all the current definable parts. So we define a tree to be definably C like when each of its parametrically definable parts is for each n n equivalent to some element from C. So in effect, every parametrically definable part satisfies the criteria of C. That's what it amounts to. And then we can define a scheme path sub sigma. So it consists of all sentences displayed on the slide. Basically says if then every sentence in sigma is true in the set defined by phi. That is the relativization of phi. 
that basically says that sigma is true in the set defined by phi. And then the, the general result follows that if C is a class of linear orders, and if X third first order theory is axiomatized by sigma, then a tree is definably C-like, in other words, each of its parametrically definable paths is the theory of C. If the tree satisfies the scheme path sub sigma. Surprisingly, the problem of paths being Undefinable is related to the problem of A path is called bounded when it contains a leaf. A tree is called bounded when each of its paths is bounded. And we say that a tree is phi bounded, where phi is a first order formula. When the substructure defined by the prime, so this notation is the substructure of defined by phi prime is that formula. Phi prime say x either itself a phi node or it's a phi node. And Tree is then called far bounded when that subtree is bounded. So, one of the reasons why bounded trees are attractive is because in bounded trees can effectively quantify the paths. There is a one to one correspondence between those paths and it's not something you can generally do in first order logic, but if the tree is bounded, then you can do it. Hmm. And this bounded comes up when one tries to axiomatize the first order theory of the class of alpha, where alpha is an ordinal. So, the problem is to identify the first order theory of the class alpha trees for alpha any ordinal at most or less than omega to the power omega. Those alphas have finitely axiomatical first order theories, but omega to the power omega does not have a finitely axiomatical first order theory. And the pretty soft cases are and the case where n is finite, but then the more interesting case of alpha equals alpha. The class of alpha this is not definable, the first order theory of that class has been For other cases of I found conditional activities and maximizations of more general classes. And note that for alpha greater than omega, if one looks at an alpha tree where alpha is greater than omega, as shown on the earlier sketch, I'll go back to this sketch. So suppose alpha equals plus one. Then this tree has an emergent omega. Uh, if one were trying to axiomatize the of class of omega plus one, in this instance, this is not an omega plus one tree because of this emergent omega path. And this is where boundedness comes in. We can use the property of boundedness to eliminate those emergent parts. 
So note that on one hand, if alpha is itself a successor ordinal, then the tree must bound it. Alpha B. If alpha is a limit ordinal, then for each limit ordinal mu, less than alpha. If phi mu is a formula that defines the set of points of height mu, then the tree must be phi mu bounded. So that will ensure that there are no emergent mu paths for mu a limit ordinal less than alpha. So if one axiomatizes the first of the class of alpha trees, even if alpha is alpha small, the axiomatizations will have to be schemes that approximate boundedness and far boundedness, as shown above. And in axiomatizing the first order theory of the class of upper trees, one would also use Dutz's approximation of wealth boundedness. But the third ingredient is that one would use the first order theory of the south. It can be shown that for each alpha omega to the power omega, there is a single set Class of alpha that axiomatizes the first order of alpha. And we call the order alpha like now the equivalent to alpha, meaning currently that it satisfies the agent's class sub alpha. Now the non standard models of alpha seen on the slide, so the non standard models of phi sub omega are omega with any number of copies of zeta or integers added to the end of omega. In the models of omega to the power n plus one are basically all omega like sums of to the power n like near orders, currently all are n like sums of omega like linear orders. And then finally, if alpha has Cantor normal form as displayed on the slide, then it has the following class of models. So basically, Sums of linear orders such that each of those linear orders is a majority equivalent to the appropriate power of omega. So one way to use this in class of alpha trees no axiomatization of the first bio trees it's known. But let us assume that B is an axiomatization of the first order theory of the class of bio trees. And likewise that B sub phi is an axiomatization of the first order theory of the class of bio trees. And then using this Sentence phi sub mu, where mu is now limit ordinal less than alpha. So when axiomatizing the first theory of the class of alpha trees, one would take limit ordinal mu. The sentence that axiomatizes its first theory, one would relativize it to of processors of x, not of x itself. And one would then use the scheme to pass it, which would have the effect of eliminating emergent new costs. 
And that is roughly the approach that one finds in the cost of options. One uses approximation of wealth functions. One uses a boundedness scheme as shown here. The one uses the sentence parts of alpha itself with the appropriate alpha. I should just mention that one then has multiple and one is faced with the practical problem that one invokes one scheme to obtain an A equivalent structure. That new structure only satisfies the same as the original structure of one part of the scheme. So that one effectively uses the largest part of the scheme, which it is an infinite scheme, but one retains only finitely many sentences of the scheme. It turns out that this is not too serious a problem. Using the compactness theorem, one can show that once it has been fixed, one only needs a finite part of the scheme to obtain the k-equivalent tree. Although, of course, one has to start because when axiomatizing the clause, the axiomatization is complete. One first picks k and k the any natural number, and then one shows that there's k equal to the standard model. So one needs to start with the original scheme because there is no bound on k, but once k has been fixed, one can get away with any finite subsets of the original schemes. Right, so in conclusion, we discussed the problem of transferring the first order theory of the class of C trees. Ongoing and future research will involve the following, and we are busy with some of these problems. Axiomatizing the further theories of classes such as bounded trees, far trees, um, the first order theory of the class of alpha trees, the class of complete trees, and the classes of cut trees and lambda trees. And then also we'd like to investigate the transfer of desirability of the theory of C trees. And what is also lacking in the literature is a good treatment of tree operations trees where the trees are and we'd like to establish peppermint water by Preservation itself show how elementary equivalence is preserved in one of the three operations, and also to adapt in the field of linear orders known as the of lock and inner from linear orders to trees. And this is basically a theorem that shows how one can start with a relatively small class of linear orders and using some very on them. It's a very large representation of their orders. Thank you.